All right, something really exciting is 3D. Photoshop CS6 Beta has really undergone a complete overhaul with 3D. Repose is gone. And I say good riddance to Repose because now everything is working right on screen. We've got draggable shadows. We've got a lot of different things. So right now we're gonna jump in and start kicking around in some of the new 3D features. One of the things that's really had a big boost here is 3D. So let's start, we'll create some type here. I'm just gonna grab our type tool and I'm just gonna click. And we'll just grab some type here and I'm just gonna hit the control T for free transform. And we're just gonna drag that out. There we go, we've got some text there. And then we're just gonna go under the 3D menu and if you're looking for Repose, you won't find it because it's gone. And everything works on screen now so much better. So we can create a new 3D extrusion from a selected layer. Notice we can also work with layers. We could work with paths. There's a lot we can do selections. So there's a lot more we can do now. But let's create the new 3D layer right there. And you'll see that if we click and drag around, we'll see that we've got it. Notice by default, though, we've got a shadow now and we've got a ground plane. So that's, that's kind of cool. One of the things we can do too is we can click on the text here and we've got our modifier tool. So we can go in the middle, we can scale this up and down uniformly. We can move it up and down. And of course we can rotate just by clicking and dragging on that little widget there. So one of the things that's really neat, I'm just gonna undo that just to make sure it's level. We can actually go under 3D here and we can choose to snap to ground plane and that'll grab it right down to the ground now we can move the object or we can move our scene see this other widget here we click on that make that active and now we can rotate around the scene without moving our object you'll notice something that's happening here too we've got our light so we can click and drag on our light and we can actually move our light around now much much easier way of working um, and then when we're in the lights too, one of the other things we can do, notice the shadow, we can soften the shadow and we can have it harder. There's a lot of different things we can do, but the other thing we can do is if we can hit the shift key, we can actually drag the shadows now. And so we can actually, you know, or obviously we'll change our lighting angle to match, but you can see that's, that's a lot of fun. So let's grab our object and notice as you go over the object, it actually selects those areas that you're over. So a lot of stuff now is context sensitive. It's on screen. So if we click here, notice we've got other options. Well, we can actually hit the V key here. And by doing that, it brings in, goes through the different modes. And you'll notice that we've got on screen things. For example, we can do different things now. We can set our bevels here. We can twist. We can do different things. And here's our caps, which would be more of our bevels. And notice what we can do here. We can just click and drag. So we can change, notice that we're adding the bevel. We can uh, round in it a little bit, see that, just by clicking and dragging. We can change the angles. And of course over here we can change the inflation angles. So there's a lot of different things you can do just by clicking and dragging right here on screen. So let's hit the V again. And we're gonna go to, to this option here. So this is where if we want we could do you know crazy things. We can taper it in and out. We've got, um, you know, other options here. Let's go up to the top. No, so wherever we go over, we can twist it. And you'll notice that there's so many different areas here that are just live. So we go over here, we can extrude, choose the extrusion depth. Um, you know, obviously we saw the tapering already. We can move down here. Let's go to our bending so we can bend it and we can twist you know, a lot of different things or we can just go over here and we can set these so if you want to get out of the the twisting and the tapering we can just hit the end there and control our extrusion depth notice that things have changed there we can just scroll down and you'll see that's because we've got the bending on so we can choose to bend these and we can have a lot of fun with the bending on the horizontal or vertical axis and then we can shear and shear just kind of pulls it across. So you can see that gives us different options there. So let me just go back to the bending and we can just set that to zero. And we can set that one to 100. 
and you can see we get a really interesting effect there. Let's go back and set that back to zero. There we go. So you can see uh, the different options we get there. There's our tapering is on. Got a little crazy there. And once again, I could just set that to 100%. And that just puts things back to normal. Let's create a little bit more extrusion. And then you can see as we go here, we've got our other options here and coordinates. So we can actually position things uh, by coordinates. And you can see that. And if we want to scale, pull them up and down. Now, what about rendering? We can do different things with rendering too. Um, to render, we just go under 3D and then we just choose render. And what it does is by default, it does a ray trace render. And notice that we've got our shadows and stuff working nicely there. And you can see that that's very nice. Um, we've also got this view here at the top. So we've got this extra view. So we can set this to the top. And then if we want to switch these out, we can see there's a top there. So we can position things around. And then we've always got our view there. So we can switch back to that. So we just swap. So if we want to look at this, say, from the front, let's have a look at the front. There's a the front. We can switch them backwards and forwards. And you can see that if we wanted to help us position things in a, in a particular way, like maybe we want it floating a little bit, we can do that and then just twirl back. We can right click here. We can save our views. So we can hit save and we'll just call that one custom view too. I'm not changing it. So we can move things around and then we can always come back to it at any time. So that's kind of useful. Um, we can add different types of objects in here. There's obviously different ways we can move things. And then when we click on these, we can other also let's click again. Now we now go to materials. We've got a lot of different types of materials we can add. These ones are fun. I can click on this, apply this material to that surface. Then I'll just grab the other surface. Notice it's now selected. We can apply the material to that bevel now. And then we render that. And what that is is actually just Alt, Alt Shift uh, Control, and then R. And that would be Option Command Shift R on Mac. And see, we can go there and now it starts to just kind of render it out. And you can see the, uh, the kind of effects you're starting to get there now. You can see a shadow and everything. So you can just kind of let that continue to render. So um, there's a lot of fun you can have with this, as you can obviously tell. Um, we can set our depth of field. Um, we can do stereoscopic 3D in here now. We can also add objects. We can go here. We can um, do our, um, our 3D here. Let me just select away here. We're going to go to our layers. Just click away. And then we're just going to choose a 3D here. And we can do a new mesh from layer if we want. We can do a postcard or a preset. And let's just add something like, say, a, a sphere here or whatever. Let's do a sphere, something nice and easy. And now what we can do, too, is we want to put these together. We select them both, just Control-click, and then hit Control-E or Command-E. And now what that will do is it will merge these together, and we can move them separately. So let's, let's look maybe at the top there so we can move things away. And we can put them next to each other. And then if we twirl them back again, see that? It's very, very easy. And then we can do things like reflections. If we want to turn a reflection on, we can do that. And then start to render that. And then you'll see that, you know, things will start to happen. Like it'll start to reflect in that object there. And obviously it takes a little while because it's, it's, it's ray tracing. Uh, but you can see the reflection starting to happen there. Or let's grab down here. Let's move things around a little bit. There we go. How's that? And we'll start rendering again. There we go. You can get a better idea of the reflection. So we've got different properties and stuff that we can set to these 3D objects. And you can see with some of these enhancements that we just covered really, really quickly, uh, particularly with this extra view up here, which you can find under the view extras and you'll see we've got, it's called the secondary view. And we can turn different options on and off. If you hit Control H, that'd be Command H on Mac, you can turn them all on or off. So anyway, that's just a quick, quick overview of some of the new features in the 3D. And uh, personally, I just, I love it because it's working so much better than it used to. And you can see the flexibility and the way that we can grab these different objects and interact with them in a much better way than we could in the past. Uh, rendering is really good. 
um, we've got some really, really great uh, materials and textures that we can apply and uh, and modeling, obviously, because of this window. This is a big one. You know, we can open that one or, or close it down. But I find it's just so much easier now to position things in three-dimensional space having more than one view. So, uh, you know, have fun, kick the tires, and I hope you enjoy the, the new 3D.